Today is the 11th of November, the day that we celebrate Veterans Day. Welcome to our Veterans Day program. Veterans Day is set aside to thank and honor all those who serve in the military, in war, and in peace. It is intended, it is intended to thank living veterans in their for their service, to acknowledge their contribution to national security, and to underscore their sacrifice and duty. Veterans Day, we both salute our veterans and give thanks to all who have served and sacrificed. We truly appreciate your direction each and every day. If you are sitting, would you please stand and remain sitting, standing please till we ask you to sit down again. At this time, Bobby Collier will offer our prayer. Would you bow with me please? Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful and thankful for all the blessings that you give us. Father, we are especially grateful for the grace that you bestow us for this nation that we live in. And Father, we know that we are partial, but we think it's the greatest nation in the world. And Father, it is that way because you have blessed us so. And Father, we are thankful for the veterans, the men and women who have served our nation. For those, Father, who have sacrificed their lives for us. May we always be mindful of that sacrifice that they have made. And Father, please help us to honor it and to honor them. And Father, we do not want to forget the families of these people who serve. Our warriors sacrifice a lot. The Father, their families sacrifice a lot too. Help us to always be mindful of them and to be supportive of them. And we pray, Father, that you will bless what we do here today to honor them. And Father, we pray that we will continue to serve you and that we will honor all veterans. Father, we pray that your will be done in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, my name is Buford. I'm from Dunlap, but I've been privileged to be with Honor Guard in Bedsaw County for several years. Made a lot of good friends. We do funerals for any veteran that deserves it, and I love them do. And I'm here to introduce you to a man that's going to make the speech, General B.B. Bell, U.S. Army retired. B.B.'s a good friend of mine. I didn't know him when he was in service. I've known him since he's got out. We hunt together and become real good friends. General B.B. Bell is a retired United States Army four-star general. He was born and raised in Oak Ridge, where his father worked for the Atomic Bomb Manhattan Project. As a career cavalry and army officer, General Bell is a former commander of U.S. and Allied forces in Korea, as well as United States Army in Europe and NATO's land component headquarters. As an armor and cavalry officer, General Bell was deployed overseas for 15 of his 39 years of active service, both peace and war. He's a veteran of the Iraq Desert Storm campaign where he served as General Norman Schwarzkopf's personal executive assistant. As a University of Tennessee Chattanooga graduate, General Bell has been named as one of Tennessee's top 100 distinguished alumni. Among his many awards and decorations, General Bell has received three awards of Distinguished Service Medal, five awards of Legion of Merit, and the Bronze Star Medal. He is also Army Ranger Qualified. General Bell is married to Katie Fields Bell, who is originally from Chattanooga, and they reside in the East Brandon area of Chattanooga. General Bell is an avid, avid outdoorsman and his passion in spending time with patriotic, God-fearing Americans. And I haven't got it wrote down, but I'm proud to call him a friend, and he's a great Christian, Jesus-loving man. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I love that man. I don't know how many of y'all know Buford Dennis. He's a bit of a legend in Sequatchie County. He might be a fugitive up here. I don't know. You never know. But thank you, Buford. I appreciate that. So uh, today, duh, is Veterans Day. That's why you're here. It's why I'm here. And I imagine that you're here because you're either a veteran or you're a family member who have veterans laced across your all's history, particularly in this county and in this city. Uh, veteran service, uh, military service, uh, goes a long way back, even to our Revolutionary War. I know for sure that you all are here because you are mostly God-fearing American patriots who love this country, the United States of America. Good for you. I'll never give that up. A country that's supposed to stand for personal liberty, freedom, and democracy. Democracy, of course, as we just exercised, being your right to vote for candidates to represent you. And that's right, elected politicians are actually supposed to work for you and me. And I know in this county that's exactly what happens. It's not supposed to be the other way around. That's why we served in the military. That's why many of us fought an enemy in the military. And I know that's what you still demand of your government. Your being here, all of you today also, tells me that you believe in the sanctity of the Constitution of the United States in its guaranteed freedoms, especially those enumerated in the First and Second Amendments of the Bill of Rights, and those being freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and certainly the right to bear arms. You also believe, I believe, <laughs> I believe that you believe in governmental checks and balances, which our, clear, our uh, Constitution clearly describes. And I for sure am here today because I know that we believe collectively in those very same ideals. I know that many of you here fought an enemy for those ideals, and your families were willing to send you off to serve in belief of these ideals, knowing that you might not come back. 
So I want to thank those of you, both families and service members, veterans, patriots, all of you here today from my heart for what you've done for this country over the decades and indeed what your families have done over the centuries. I will spare you the traditional Veterans Day speech where I might articulate the history of Veterans Day. I'm not sure I know what the history of Veterans Day is other than veterans being thanked properly by their country at least once a year. History is important, but what's more important is what's going on in our country today, both here locally and nationally. Today I'm here to celebrate, of course, what you contributed. But we can't, I don't believe, as patriots, stop with what you've contributed. While you're no longer, those of you who fought, fighting for freedom with force of arms against a foreign enemy, let there be no doubt that the fight for freedom in our country continues to this very day. Unfortunately for some of us, for you too, now that fight looks like it's a bit here at home instead of against a foreign enemy overseas somewhere. Not since, in my view, our Revolutionary War have we seen so many people so dissatisfied with the direction of their culture, the debasing of our values, and the direction of our federal government than we feel collectively today. Tens of millions of Americans, of which I believe I can include many of you, are fed up with our federal government's overreach, and this is Democrats and Republicans alike. I'm not going to get into politics directly here today, but we're fed up with governmental overreach, governmental intrusion, governmental edicts, and even excessive governmental police actions. We're tired of being told what to teach our kids in our own local schools. We're tired of government telling us when and where we can and can't practice our religious beliefs. We're tired of being told that we are the crime problem simply because we lawfully own personal weapons. We're tired of excessive governmental power sticking its nose into every aspect of our lives. We're tired of heavy taxes to fund ridiculous programs that we don't believe in and we don't support. We're tired of open borders producing tens of millions of illegal aliens in our land who we now are asked to feed, house, clothe, and provide welfare assistance to with even higher and higher taxes. We're tired of Chinese drugs flooding our country and killing our kids at the hands of Mexican drug cartels. And we're definitely tired of escalating prices at the gas pump and in the supermarket. So kind of, I am fed up with all this. I'm about done, cooked, as you might say. Um, thank you. Meanwhile, our government, believe it or not, and you know this, has somehow made lethal foreign enemies of both Russia and China. Enemies that our government expects your sons and daughters and your grandsons and granddaughters, maybe there's a great-grandson or granddaughter represented as well, expects you to send them out to fight and die against. I thought that when the Cold War ended, that we would at least be smart enough as a government to partner with Russia in order to check the inevitable advances of China. But that developing partnership dissolved with the politically motivated Russia collusion hoax. And now we're directly threatened with war by both Russia and China every day, as well as, of course, North Korea, Iran, and believe it or not, even countries from Latin America who are arming themselves with Chinese weapons to threaten us from the South. And, regrettably, we have very few allies who are willing to stand with us against all these tyrannical advances. America, in many respects, is no longer respected and feared as the leader of the free world, as it has been for so many decades. Now to meet these very real military threats, and I admit they're real, Russia's a real threat to us now. Americans are clearly losing faith in their military, 
which has never happened during my lifetime. And I deeply respect those of you who have relatives, sons, daughters, granddaughters, serving today and allowing them to serve. But please know that today, moms and dads all over our country are no longer willing to send their youngsters to serve in a military that they fear will indoctrinate their kids with unacceptable norms and cultural absurdities. They're worried about that. Can you believe it? The Army missed its recruiting objective by 25% this year, and it's on track to badly miss its recruiting objectives again in 2023. The hollow army of the Cold War era is returning to us, and it can't meet the threats of both China and Russia simultaneously. And this puts us all, believe it or not, in great danger, even right here in Pikeville, Tennessee, and in Bledsoe County. So on this Veterans Day, what does my gloomy picture of America say about the United States? I think, to me, it says that we must, we must put people into elected office at all levels of government, local, state, and federal, who are committed to returning America to its traditional core values and restoring our traditional moral fabric, sanctity of the family, spiritual freedom, personal liberty, while limiting, deeply limiting the intervention of government into our personal lives. We simply have to crack down also on crime, put the bad guys in jail, except my friend Buford, leave him out. <laughs> He's not a bad guy either, so that's why he didn't get to go to jail. Close our borders and stop drug trafficking, which is killing our kids. I know it's killed some kids here in Bledsoe County. It has to. And most of that stuff's come up out of the, across the Mexican border, but coming to us originally from China. And they're doing it on purpose, not for fun. They don't need the money. On this Veterans Day, we must restore America's faith in our military as the single most important institution in protecting our Constitution against all enemies, foreign and, yes, domestic. So veterans, those of you here today and families, that's what's at stake on this very important Veterans Day. As veterans and families of veterans, that is our continuing mission. You served honorably, and many of you with valor on the battlefields where America sent you. You didn't ask to go, but that's where you ended up. And all Americans are eternally grateful for what you've done for us. I sure am. Thank you all again. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. I get, a, I get a teensy bit emotional when I think about my troops. I don't have any troops anymore. Uh, my wife thinks I've got one troop her. But she, she's like a good sergeant major. She doesn't put up with any of the BS I get. But I get very emotional thinking about my soldiers and sailors, airmen, and marines who served with me. So thank you all again. Indeed, we are eternally grateful for your sacrifices that you made and your families made over the centuries, literally, of our country's existence. Today, today, the fight for the moral and cultural fabric of America is right before us. God willing, it will not be a battle at arms, but a battle at the polls. A battle, literally, at our kitchen tables. A battle in our schools, in universities, a battle in our church sanctuaries, and a battle against destructive ideologies being brought to our very doorsteps by socialists and, yes, indeed, from the Cold War era, communists. It's still our fight, and I pray that we are in this fight to win it. I know that I am. Okay, on that gloomy note, I'll conclude. Thank you all. God bless you for celebrating celebrating the contributions and sacrifices of our veterans and their families on this very, very special day. And thank God for the rain. We need it. It's not bad. It's a good thing. We, your country cannot thank you enough year in, year out. It's my great honor to be here in Bledsoe County and Pikeville specifically. Thank you for inviting me to speak. I wouldn't have missed it. I've turned down a ton of places to be able to come up here today. May God bless every one of you. 
May God bless and preserve our Constitution. And may God bless our United States of America. Thank you all very much. These are not just names on a wall. These men sacrificed all. They died for our freedom. I will be reading the names as they appear on the wall. World War I, Angel Victor L. Arnett, John. Alt, Thomas W. Austin, Amos L. Curtis, James H. Dyer, Samuel C. Elliot Anderson, Hamilton Burnett, Hillis Alfred, Macmillan David H, Miller Sherman, Simmons Charlie, Swafford George R, Bayless Billy Bird, Blaylock James, Brewer Ray, Brewer Robert L, Brock. Melvin C. Cagle, James E. Childress, James C. Collier, A. B. Corvin, Ernest H. Cunningham, Joe Jr. Davis, Ed C. Farmer, John C. Farmer, William C. Briggs, Charles M. Brigsby Greer, Sanders George A, Smith B H, Smith Clyde, Stevens Harvey E, Walker Elmer F, Washington Samuel J, Whitson Artie Artie V, Swafford Manis Turner. Willard Levi. Korean veteran. Henry Chester Pruitt. Harold David McMillan. Andrew A. Ladd. Alvin S. Rigsby. Vietnam veteran. Bobby Dwight Lewis. Billy Frank Mooneyham, Arnold Glenn Oaks, Joseph Anthony Orito, Thomas Wayne Bigford, and Nelson Page Henry. Thank you. Placing the wreath will be Don McLeod. This time, the Bledsoe County Chorus will sing God Bless America.
thanks to everyone helping honor our veterans today. I would also like to recognize a group of men and women for your courage, your commitment, your service, and your continued sacrifice as members of our Bledsoe County Honor Guard. and the Bledsoe County Chorus for singing our songs. Thank you. You may do this good. And may God bless America. Also forgot to thank one, too, for giving the great big help. We couldn't have had this without the help of Winky Cable providing our sound system. So thank you.